Last so time, <laughs> previously on D and D, uh, the Harbor Festival was flooded by the freak tsunami. You guys came to the aid of several townsfolk, um, some more successfully than others. Then they were the village of Swinford and the coastal areas were attacked by some unknown Piscean invaders that seemed hell bent on killing folks, kidnapping others, destroying everything in sight. You dealt with them in the flooded forest just outside of Swinford, again in a small alcove just before the beach. Um, I think we were here, if memory serves. So we'll jump right back in there with this. We had split the party. Uh, the four of you here were uh, dealing with the Chul. Uh, the Chul's dead, by the way. It is, yes. Uh, and the other group had gone back to the village to make sure that the people that were injured got the care that they needed and to check on the status of the village, which was also attacked by a Chul that had been previously damaged by something. Um, we'll just jump in right to the action, and that's all right with everybody. Let's do it. Cool. I love action. <laughs> um, as this group of four of you um, finish the fight, something bizarre happens. You are working with figuring out how to release the captives from this pen. Uh, Alexa had already freed the people that were had their hands tied, if memory serves. Or no, maybe it was... Jezza was and me. Jezza did it? I couldn't remember. I'm sorry. And um, you guys are just taking stock of the situation, trying to figure out. I don't think we ever got these people out of their containment vessel. But um, as you're watching the these fish-like humanoids, their bodies begin to bloat and swell very, very rapidly. Um, almost as if like the stages of decomposition had been radically accelerated. Uh, what character? What bodies were floating? Was it the enemies we just fought, you were saying? Yeah, these okay. weird fish creatures are beginning to bloat, swell, and then almost as suddenly as that process began, their skin literally liquefies, splashing all over the beach, plush, 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 becoming pools of slightly less than completely transparent water that just begins to stream away towards the coastline as these streams of water issue forth back towards the ocean the spears in the cart and the spears you each are holding similarly liquefy, becoming this almost living fluid that just joins up with all of the smaller hydrous flows of water heading back to the ocean until it becomes one contiguous stream heading back towards the beach. Yeah. Oh man, that was a fun toy to hold on to while it lasted. Yes, organ liquid. Kig saying organ liquid. Uh, guys, back at the get Swinford proper, you guys are experiencing the same thing. That massive chul that you destroyed suddenly liquefies into a giant puddle that splashes everywhere, but the water doesn't get absorbed into the ground, nor does it displace, you know, in a giant splash pattern like a bucket of water might, but instead just takes one swirl gathering its mass and then just streams off almost like a snake taking serpentine coils down uh, out of the forest towards the coast. Uh, benevolent GM, who I absolutely respect, I have one spell left and I want to try and use it. Okay. Uh, seeing that, Zaz, suddenly thinking quickly because he's high on adrenaline, would like to cast Destroy Water and see what happens. Okay. Uh, how much can you destroy? 10 gallons. Nice. 10 gallons. No, it's, uh, that's create. Oh, it is destroy 10 gallons. Yeah. Nice. Um, you, <laughs> uh, you don't have to be that close. Yeah. 30 feet is plenty. <laughs> with a brief incantation to the storm God, <laughs> you lash out with a reptilian finger and a bolt of lightning literally strikes from the sky, hitting a patch of the water, instantly vaporizing a bunch of it. Um, small plumes of like a water vapor still linger in the air but they scintillate glowing slightly like they have almost a supernatural or magical property to them it's kind of like a sparkler for a second the second half or the first half depending on your orientation of the chul liquid continues to serpentine towards the beach um, but you destroyed a good chunk of it and this weird sort of right. 
Yeah, haze still lingers in the air. Stupid. So if we fight that chul again, it's just going to be a lower torso. <laughs> and that's the easy, that part. easy part. Now, here's my question. So this was what I was thinking about, but I didn't want to interrupt your, your spiel. When you were saying about the uh, about the the uh, javelins turning into liquid, I was looking at my cantrips and I saw this ray of frost thing. And I was like, if I froze that liquid into the shape of a javelin, would it stay a javelin? Um, try it, I suppose. Is like, I press Ray of Frost at the javelin in Jez's hands. Oh, rude! Not in the one in your hand. <laughs> I don't I'm have not one, in my hand. one anymore. Yeah, or where you dropped it. Okay, uh, yeah, it's like don't shoot that at me. <laughs> um, as it begins to liquefy, you shoot it with Ray of Frost, freezing it. Um, in this. And it honestly kind of looks like an, un, uh, an unfinished forge project where, like, someone took liquid metal and just threw it on the ground. Um, it gets starts shaking violently and is literally being drugged through the sand by some unseen force, almost like a an unseen person is just carrying it by the handle, dragging all three tines of the trident through the sand. It's really struggling it to do so, though. Someone catch it! <laughs> okay, runs forward, grabs it. Okay. You have a ice cold, slightly melted trident replica in your hand. It's almost painfully cold to the touch. And as your grasp tightens, it starts to wriggle and try to get away from you. The warmth from your hand slightly melts the portions of the haft that you're touching. And as they drip to the ground, the sand doesn't absorb each droplet. Instead, each small minuscule drop just begins rolling end over end down towards the coastline. Uh, can I dump out my water skin and fill it into my water skin? Sure. Do you want me to roll anything to do that? No, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Um, um, just I kind have... of catching the drops as the haft of the spear melts. Yeah, just get some of it into the water skin. Okay. Um, if we sit here long enough for Reed's body warmth to melt about a third of it, that'll fill your water skin. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Does it do anything while it's in the water skin? It feels like um, like a small animal in a bag. Like it feels almost like there's something living trying to f kick and fight its way out of the bag. Is it trying it's to kick and fight in a particular direction? Always towards the coastline. No matter how you change the orientation or the height of the bag, it's always heading towards the beach. Cool. We have a weird compass now. <laughs> Ta-da! My plan to give a uh, reed green bottle a javelin failed, but now we have weird compass. <laughs> the the people in front of Jezza are looking questionable, like they're trying to find the words to ask for you to get them out of here. But after everything they've just endured today, they might be in shock. I kind of want to go look at the panel of the thing that they're currently trapped in. Okay. Uh, do you want me to roll Arcana to figure out if I can see how to use it? Uh, yeah, that'd be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the language right. is entirely foreign to you. You have no idea what it says proper. But you do understand magic, and seemingly no matter where you've been in this world, all magic follows fundamental principles, right? It's like how math is a universal language. The design of this makes some sense to you. You're not exactly sure how it was conjured, you're not sure how they power it, but you think you understand how to deactivate it. Um, okay. There's a small sequence of buttons, and you believe that you could interrupt the flow of power to it at least. Whether that damages it forever or not, you couldn't say, but you can definitely turn it off if you want. I'm just going to turn it off. I don't care if it's damaged forever. <laughs> okay. You power it down. Um, the uprights that were holding together these sort of rings of electricity collapse, falling inert in the sand. And the people that were captive take like tenuous steps over that threshold and nothing bad happens to them. One of them hugs you and the other two just take off running into the woods back towards the village. We've got the half a chul liquid um, has left the village. It's you guys at this beach here, this little alcove, um, see a giant swarm of liquid come right past you, heading on its way to the beach. 
Well, that's weird. Huh, should we be worried about that? That's yeah, probably fine. Thing is, I mean... Well, I don't have. I could fire another ray of frost at it, but I think it's it's gone at this point. Has anyone checked on these people up here yet? Uh, yes, they they're just in shock, dumbstruck by what's happening. Um, kind of just waiting to see what you guys are going to do. Some people seem reluctant to leave this area because by themselves they were captured and nearly killed. Um, they're just sometimes just standing still is the right course of action. I'm beginning to feel like the danger is temporarily passed. It might be safe to head back. All right. Uh, we are in an impasse here. There's no more immediate danger in this vicinity. You have flowing liquid moving on its own towards the beach and villagers that are aimless at the moment but might want an escort back to the village. Or we could just make our home here on this lovely little beach cove and uh, Jezza can start work on a coconut phone. <laughs> I think I think we should go back. We should uh, escort these uh, poor villagers back to their village and then maybe take a short and or long rest and therefore get all our stuff back before we go into a fight where I can only throw spears and knives. <clears throat> okay. Uh, unless there is a divergent opinion, we all go back to the village together as one. No, oh, sounds good. Um, once there, you see several families still looking for lost and missing peoples. Um, there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of heartache going around. It's hard for you to not feel invested in some of these people's tragedy um but just pushing aside the people with their hands out asking for help you guys are able to find a shady corner and take a 60 minute rest or stepping up on your feet again tired disheveled um really kind of just beat down by the last two hours of this morning um there's some commotion uh the constable basically the the local sheriff in charge of swinford is talking to some people who are arming themselves with pitchforks you see one guy trying to wrap with some bailing wire the shattered hammer of a mall um it looks like he's organizing a militia guess i'll walk up to him and ask him uh what are y'all what are y'all planning on doing as you approach are you here to enlist, son? We need every able-bodied man we can find. Uh, tell him to calm down and ask him who are they planning on fighting. Have you not seen the beach? Are there are did more come back? Come back? They're setting up shop. They've taken more of us. Uh, which way do they take them? Yeah, which way did they take them? Sitting at the beach with their goddamned bubble. Huh. I'm gonna give like a kind of awkward laugh and walk back to the group and tell them what the guy just told me. Is it the same group that we were just at? No, uh, you guys haven't been to the beach yet. This is the map that we're on now is a coastal cove inset a little bit. He's talking about at the beach proper where the waves break on the sand. Mm. Perhaps we should investigate. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, investigating sounds like a good idea. Do we care about stealth? Y yes. yes. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that sounds like a stealth check. Uh, I care about stealth. Yes. Uh, the boisterous well, half dwarf does not really care about stealth. The half elf sorcerer cares about stealth. As we are moving together as a single unit, as a cohesive party, I would like one person to take the responsibility of leading the group, and that person will helm the stealth check. Uh, what is your what is your uh, basics? What is your stealth at? Eight. Is it plus eight? Is 
eight. I think basic should help the stealth check. I yeah. think. I think <laughs> mine's kick, only five. Kick, I think kick the dagger should uh, helm the uh, the stealth check. Hello. 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 Am no, I here? No. I'm okay, you're tall. Okay. So, Kig, go ahead and give us a stealth check. That's representative of you just kind of keeping everybody in a quiet, low line, trying to make the trip as easy as you can for the people you know that aren't very quiet or sneaky. I'm just curious you... as to what I would roll in. Kig, <laughs> I'm also curious. That was cute. Oh, wow. Well, we're, we're playing this game. I, I could potentially roll. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just want to say yeah, I could potentially roll negative. Stealth. Oh man, that actually is my favorite stealth roll. The negative stealth. A zero. I like the zero. Enough? Oh, I'm still raging. Hold on. I'm a little happy that we uh, didn't put me in charge of that. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Kig, you do a fine job of retracing the steps that we've already been going back through the flooded forest to that small coastal alcove um, where you had just finished freeing people and not but an hour before. Um, there are troughs in the sand here left by that flowing hydrous fluid. It eventually leads down to a beach. Uh, you creep over some taller, rocky outcroppings uh, and you can see the ocean now. Um, Kig, if you want to go any further on your own, I'd like a stealth check for you sneaking ahead. This is as far as you're comfortable taking the group of people uh, without alerting anyone to your presence. Do you think if we were to go any farther, all of us, that we'd be pretty easily detected? So you said I can see the ocean? Mm -hmm. There's no tsunami or anything anymore? No. Like, a bunch of, uh, nothing like washing up on shore that I can't see? Uh, why don't you give me a perception check and we'll go from there. Okay. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> I saw a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is challenging because of your poor poor burning eyes um, due to the sunlight sensitivity. Maybe you weren't the best advanced scout. Um, you see the wreckage of a ship crashed on the rocky shores. Um, you also see several of these fishy like humanoid creatures walking up and down the beach there are several positioned on rocks um almost like sentries and then patrolling all along the beach is a giant fish creature he looks very similar to the ones you fought in the forest only this one's like 16 or 17 feet tall and densely muscled <laughs> he's got four arms and two legs instead of two arms and two legs and he carries a brutal warglaive strapped to his back. And just beyond him, you can see a sphere of scintillating floating fluid about 40 feet in diameter, just sitting half on the beach, half in the water. Um, and you see sort of vague forms moving about within that sphere, but you can't from your vantage and with that roll, you don't have any more. Okay, well. Does anyone want to come with me? That's kind of dangerous. Um, I'll come with you. All right. Well, we both have the we both have the stealth. Well, check. Hopefully, I got the shitty one out of the way. But would you like third? I'll take. I'll I mean, go forward. Oh, I'm gonna run. But yeah, come on. And, uh, if we can make it. Oh my gosh! Well, All right, I'm seen. <laughs> uh, the rogue rolled the one. I'm gonna say in like a very loud, hushed tone that I'm gonna stay behind. <laughs> so, you guys go ahead. go ahead. I'll be back here. Just gonna be like, y'all go ahead without me. I point my my quarter seven Leo. I'm staying with him. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this move now so that it makes life simpler. This is the scene that lies before you. That's a bubble. Ooh, bubbly. Bubbly. Bubble. 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 Um. Hi, that's a cobalt. <laughs> uh, 
So Leo and Jezza decided to stay back a little bit. Is that correct? Yeah, probably stay on the outskirts. And everybody Jezza's else. Jezza's also staying back. He's tired still. Very sleepy. Everybody else came right around to about here. At the smallest bit of rock that still exists. You're about 15 feet off the elevation of the beach. Um, and you look down on the scene as it is portrayed. <laughs> As she withdraws, the two starfish also immediately liquefy and begin just trailing off into the ocean in the direction of the aqueous orb's last position. Uh, uh -huh. You take one quick surveil of the battlefield, and there's the, the broken ship, a bunch of dead bodies from the, the broken ship. There are no enemy force bodies. There is no enemy force technology left behind. But as you're examining things, her golden trident remains plunged in the sand. Shiny. Yeah, I want it. I'll go. Uh, go check. I it walk out. up. I walk up and pick it up. Uh, well, isn't it? Isn't it over here? Yes. Oh yeah, it's over there. I'll, uh, over here. <laughs> yeah. I was there first. <laughs> Seems like Leah would be the. One. Uh, I'll, I'll just walk up to it. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna like inspect it. Basically, yeah, like you guys are holding it up over three feet. I'm just kind of dangling. But are are you people? going to touch it? Um, Leo? no, I'm not. I'm just gonna like inspect it and kind of like. Okay, see I'll if roll I to can, touch it. You know, you admire it. It's almost 16 feet long, buried four feet in the dirt. Um, and you estimate it's got to weigh three or four hundred pounds. It's a, it's an impressive weapon for a giant Dang. creature. You marvel at them. I try to pick it up at the craftsmanship. Uh. Kig, you try to touch it? You yes. grasp it. You can't even wrap both hands together around the circumference of the haft. And Aww. as you try to yank it up out of the sand, it immediately shrinks down, rapidly decreasing in size until it's appropriately sized for you. Oh, sweet! You now hold a, golding, a golden trident, trident in your hand. It crackles with untold potential. Hell yeah! Oh my god! Call me Kick the Trident. <laughs> all right, same here. You guys are all in elation, celebrating both the victory, the defeat of Undine, uh, the amazing golden trident left behind, and um, there's suddenly motion amongst the sand near that shipwreck. As you turn to investigate the motion, like sometimes you can just see something moving you don't necessarily know what it is but you can see the the motion itself the ground there is charred black in some cases even turned to like dark pained glass where kel's witch bolt went awry and from out of one of those areas of charred glass a small charred hand crawls up out of the sand Everybody, I imagine, is on edge, and you wait just one moment more to see the small frame of a young 10- or 12-year-old boy crawl out of the hole in the sand. The back half of his head is missing, and there's an obvious crack, jagged gash in his face from the base of his skull, wrapping around the right side of his face and jaw. I and immediately... he stumbles to his feet, uncertainly wobbling towards you, and just... Have you seen my mom? Mummy. <laughs> uh, immediately run to him to see if there's anything I can do. Yeah, yeah same. Big no. Uh, I'm going to look at hey, Kel and be like, stay back. did you do that? So, hey, try. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no thanks. Obi. So you know that uh, water skin that I have filled with the magic water? What is it doing mm -hmm. right now? Uh, it's violently, rapidly pointing in the direction that you last saw Undine. It's like at a feverish pitch trying to break through the leather of the water skin. Cool. Oh. Hey, Kel. Is yeah. there uh, anything I can do for this poor child? Did you know that you uh, you raised this, this child on a freak necromancy accident? Oh. Uh, right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it wanders around looking for each of you in turn to answer its question if you've seen his mommy 
Would I so be? I'm gonna point at Kel and be like, whatever they're like. I instinctively <laughs> kind of uh, uh, look at this. Probably shouldn't be a live child. Feel a certain kinship with it for some reason. I don't know why. And then I point at Kel and be like, is it this person? The child approaches Kel and just tries to put its small hand out to grasp at yours, you know, reaching above his shoulder height to reach your hand. My name is Opie. Will you uh, take care of me? I I uh, kneel down into the sand and give Opie a hug. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. He embraces you. Um, everyone else gets to see that the back of Opie's head is just half collapsed skull and exposed brain. Um, but Kel doesn't seem to be that put off by it. I don't think I can heal that. <laughs> <laughs> Says Reed. Where I think you? we need to find some hats. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, I I take my uh, uh, cloak off uh, and the hood and put it over Opie to cover his head so no one else has to look at it. Aww. 